e-health and m-health are these uh, the em emerging markets at the moment and of course some nice buzzwords what we have my name is alexander kapler i'm the owner of the internet company kss services and solutions based in hamburg and i would like to give you a brief introduction into the health market and how you develop there and the regulations you might apply, apply to them and how we use type of 3 flow with Roma data. So I said it's the emerging market. Why? If we have a look on the numbers, on the revenue, which we had in 2013, we had a worldwide revenue in the mobile health market by 4.5 billion US dollars. But forecasts are saying that we will have by uh, 2017 23 billion US dollars. So we have a growth in five years by 500%. So I would say that this is definitely an emerging market. And I like to be a part of that. So, but why is it now happening? I mean, the Digitalization has begun several years ago. Why not in that way in the health market? So this is mainly because a rethinking has started now. We have several problems in the healthcare. So even doctors are starting now to think how can, he, how can um, IT help to have a better treatment for my patients? like with apps where we have a video conference if they are not close to me and several other stuff. And the patients are searching on the internet for information about their disease. So we have a growing app market out there at the moment. For an instance, by 2011, we had something around 100 apps in the App Store. Today, we have several thousand apps in the health market. So developing for that market might apply to some risks. Because a doctor might come to you and say he wants to have collected some data and he wants to use them for treatment. But attention, this might apply, this might apply, apply. Um, to some special regulations. And these regulations are covered by the Medical Device Directive. So what is that? The Medical Device Directive is the directive from the Euro European Committee, which tells you what is okay to develop and what not, what has to be more secure. And a little bit more cryptical way of saying medical directive, uh, medical device directive is saying directive 9342EEC. In Germany, it's the, Medi uh, it's the Medizinprodukte Gesetz, MPEG. It might be a different name for other European countries. And of course, the, in uh, the States, is something similar like that. So there are rules you have to take care of. But when do they, these rules apply to you? Well, of course, if you're developing for the health market, you might apply to them. The thing is, and the magic word, to become a medical device or a medical software, the intention of use. Let me give you an example. Think of a, 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 um, a regular calculator. And now add a button with a factor of 1.5. Now, if you sell the calculator, it's just a calculator with a button who has a factor 1.5. But if you're writing down in the manual, this factor is used to, you to calculate the amount of insulin which you need in the morning. At that moment, you become a medical device or a medical software, and those rules may apply to you. So this sentence, I think, is not bad to explain it even a, bit, uh, even a little bit further. So if the software is intended to be used for the evaluation of patient data to support or influence the med medical care provided to that patient. And why is that? Because you have to be sure that 
um, an error, like a calculation error, won't harm you. And to support you to find out if you are probably developing a medical software edge medical device, there is a decision chart, a, a chart there, which is, help, which is helping you. This is released by the European Committee. So as you can see, you have up there at the start, and then there are several questions which lead at the end to those two boxes. One is saying, you're fine, you're not a medical software, all looks good, as long as you don't write something stupid in the manual. On the other hand, this might be covered, the software you're developing might be covered by the medical device act, uh, directive. So, you are developing medical software. And if you do so, then there are many regulations are coming to you. Like, you have first of all to decide which category of medical product you have. There are up to five categories, and you have to figure out which is the correct category for you. We gained, in the last three years, a lot of experience in this area with apps like RheumaTrack, AsthmaTrack, um, Checkmaster, and even web pages in it for doctors and others. And all of that, especially the Checkmaster, which was kind of a prototype for Roma Data, lead us to Roma Data. Well, what's Roma Data now? It's a digital register, and not only for studies. So, see, a lot of the doctors and studies are working still with paper. They have paper questionnaires, and of course they have there some uh, limitations. You have a very high costs if you want to distribute new questionnaires. Uh, questionnaires. If you have some problems in there, um, for instance, the patient uh, makes two crosses, but only one is allowed, it might be that this questionnaire from this patient is invalid, you can't use it anymore, and stuff like that, because you can't do a, a plausibility check. Therefore, that's why we came up together with 14 rheumatologists and developed Rheumadata. Rheumadata solves these problems. We can here create now unlimited questionnaires, and we can even do questionnaires for the doctors and their offices, only for their offices. We're very flexible here in this way. And we can uh, select uh, specific questionnaires, so of course we can handle all the data, but the really important and great thing in there is you have suddenly access to real-time data. You gain data from the field where real people are, not only the environment where you know your variables, you get real data and you can do research on them. And that's awesome. And here's a little scheme how we set up our product. So in the doctor's office, we have their iPads with a native um, software on there. And those iPads are synchronizing their data with a web service. And the web service here is type of 3 flow, what we're using. Also, of course, uh, the security is important. That's why all uh, uh, the connections are encrypted, but I'm coming later to that part. And um, each doctor's office has its own server. So we want also to uh, reduce the impact of getting probably hacked. No one can be sure that some th something like the bash shock won't happen again with, some, uh, every, um, with any other program what you're using on a web server. So we try to reduce this problem um, as good as we can. And we're collecting all the, those data anonymized later on on a different server where no pe personal data are involved anymore. And those data are getting used to doing research. So I want to give you now a, a short overview of our administration backend, what we have there for the doctors. 
At the moment, we're in the phase one. We have launched the product, and it's online. And here we have in the back end, of course, to communicate between the web service and the native iOS app, a RESTful API. We have uh, uh, developed all of that uh, in the test-driven way. And we're using, of course, the continuous delivery with Git, Jenkins, and uh, Typo3 Surf to deploy our software. Here are some screenshots from the back end. It's just customized to their needs at the moment. It's not uh, that interesting, probably. But still, uh, it's what we need for our uh, work at the moment for the first phase. So we have the possibilities to have one medical, uh, 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 one director's office on a server, but we can also have several. It's no problem at all to have more than one. We have an overview where we see the iPads, iPads which are used. And here we have some security features built in, like we can disable uh, the software. We can say, OK, please delete all of the data uh, on the iPad and stuff like that. Of course, creating, managing all the questionnaires and the, more or less the heart creating the questions to the questionnaire. And how we do that, uh, the, the great thing is usually if you're trying to change an app in Android or in iOS, you have to deliver a new app or you make an uh, HTML view. So we don't have to do that. We developed some patterns on the iOS app and we can set up now the questionnaire on the server and changing them dynamically. So we have at the moment like the yes, no questions, simple answers where you just can hit one button, where you can uh, hit two, three, and more numbers, of course, of course, with their units, slider, which uh, with some nice uh, smileys on there. Um, Another slider, if you don't want to show uh, numbers, but you like more text. And even special events, uh, special question types like the uh, DAS28. So here you can click on your joints, which are aging if you have rheumatism. And of course, this system uh, has to be very secure because we have personal data in there and nobody wants that their medical data are coming out. So we're using here a bunch of security steps. One of that is, as mentioned already, of course, an SSL encryption that's uh, standard today. That's nothing special here. Um, but all personal data are getting encrypted on the server. And uh, they're in that way encrypted that the key isn't stored on the hard drive. So even someone is breaking in and is copying all of the data, he wouldn't get uh, the personal data out of there. Um, we have one service and uh, one server as mentioned for each medical practice because you have other threats there as well. What happens if someone is stealing the iPad and is still able somehow to figure out how he get uh, access to the system? And so we have a completely physically uh, separated installations for each doctor's office. And because of the data privacy we apply to here in Germany, we have all our servers, of course, hosted in Germany, which was um, also very important to the doctors. So at the end, I want to thank you to support us for developing Rama data and as mentioned, we have just the first step at the moment done here, but we're looking forward to develop even the research module. We want to add type of three NEOs on top of that um, and stuff like that. And this uh, is, is mainly possible through the community of, you, of type of three flow and uh, type of three NEOs, which I want to thank you very much for that. And I want to say a special thanks to Robert Lemke and Martin Hollmann, which is sitting here, 
uh, for helping us to develop this great software. So at the end, uh, I'm done here. And uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead. <laughs>